Hello, I'm back. <laughs> it's me again. Um, did I move my seat? Maybe it's because I have on different shoes. Um, I'm on my way to an appointment. This is my second time being out today. And I did something not so smart. Um, I had to drop my son off at school this morning. So I went to Dunkin' Donuts. Bad choice. And I tried that Beyond breakfast sandwich. It was good. I would do it again because when I was eating things like sausage like that, that's one thing I never liked um, that fast food places had was their sausages. Disgusting. But I can deal with the Beyond thing. Um, so I had, oh, like I told you before, my son doesn't go to school until like after nine o'clock. So I stopped and got something to eat after I dropped him off, like I said. And I also got a tea, a large tea. And I've already drank, drank the whole thing. I drank it. <laughs> so I think it's, I'm very caffeine sensitive. So I think it's got my heart rate pumping with the least little thing that I do. So I'm pretty sure when I go into this appointment, my blood pressure is going to be high. I shouldn't have drank that today knowing I was going to the doctor. I shouldn't have drank it at all. Sometimes I forget why I don't do certain things. Maybe I should write it all down. That's probably the reason why I quit drinking tea all the time. It's because it's, it's it's not a lot of caffeine, but it's still too much caffeine for me. And I can't um, do regular coffee either. I have to do decaf. Y'all don't laugh, but I can't do it. If I do, say if I drink a regular coffee in the morning, by noonish, I'm feeling a little funny. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me right away. Then I'd say by three or four o'clock, I just feel like, I, I don't know, I can't explain it. It's not a jittery feeling. It's a really an uneasy, sick feeling. So, I don't know. I think it may be the type of caffeine that some of this stuff has because I can drink a Coke and it not make me feel like that. If I drink too much, I'll feel like that, but I can drink a Coke and all it'll do is make me not be able to sleep at night. <laughs> Depending on how late in the day I drink it. So I have to be careful with what I do. And because of a medication that I'm taking that already increases my blood pressure, me adding caffeine on top of it was not the smartest thing to do, but I wasn't thinking. I was just like, Ooh, I want something to drink. I'm going to get a tea. <laughs> And wrong thing to do but I'm going through two cities to get to where I need to get to for my appointment I'm actually going to see the plastic surgeon I had my mastectomy um, January 30th and I had bilateral and then I had uh, the rest of the reconstruction done I think it was in September see I don't even remember that I remember the, the um, mastectomy very well I remember that date and I remember the date that I was diagnosed officially with breast cancer those days I remember I remember the last day of full strength chemo so because it stopped, I think we stopped two um, treatments early because I had neuropathy and that's kind of, I guess, a bad sign. So we stopped it. But I think my, my, um, I haven't really talked about that on here. Maybe I will. I don't know. But anyway, I think my the way they did mine is not the way that you would normally think. Um, 
what he did. I did chemo first to shrink it as small as possible and make it pretty much undetectable. I think that's what happened. And then I had the surgery. So a lot of people, from what I understand, have surgery first and then do chemo and radiation and all that. And the reason I didn't do radiation because I didn't try to do a lumpectomy because we, the way of mine, the mass was situated, I would have been so disfigured anyway that it, w it didn't make any sense to just try to do a lumpectomy or whatever it's called. So I chose just to take them off because I don't want to be coming back here for going through this again. And I know I, it can still pop up somewhere else or in my chest wall. I'm very well aware of that. But just take them off. <laughs> That's what I felt like. At first I was like, I was torn as to whether I wanted to do bilateral or not. But after it sunk into my head that, you know, if you leave this one on, you might end up coming back in here again to do this all over again. More likely because you keep that one breast, then nope, just gonna take it off. So, there's so much about, or maybe I was just naive, I don't know, but it seems like there's so much about that, the whole process of breast cancer, that people just don't know, you don't know it until you're in it. And I think that's what annoys me a little bit about, um the way uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is handled. It's not for me. <laughs> I mean, I don't need things that say think pink and all of that. I don't need that. That's for, I think, more the general public that doesn't, that isn't um, affected so much by it not people that have gone through it. Yeah. It's like, you always have a constant reminder anyway, so. And I used to always wonder, when I went to the doctor's office or to get blood work or whatever, why did they ask me, um, do I have a preference of what arm to use? I never knew why they asked that. Now I know why. Because when I had my surgery, they took one of, I think she called it a sentinel lymph node to test to make sure that there was no cancer there, that it had not spread to my lymph nodes. Luckily, according to pathology, it had not. There was no cancer found. Um... I don't know why I'm out of breath. I think I need to take a puff of my inhaler. <laughs> um, but there was nothing found. But because she took that lymph, my my um, surgeon was is a female. Because she took the lymph node, I have to be careful with my left arm. No pressure, anything like that, because. I could end up with lymph edema because I'm missing that node over there. And I forgot twice. <laughs> uh, the first time, it was just one of those wrists. Well, both times, actually, it was the wrist thing. So hopefully, it, well, I was hoping it because it was just that. It didn't do any damage. The first time, I was just talking to the lady because I was at um, a doctor's office and her name was exactly the same as mine, spelled the same as mine. And we were just talking about that and chit-chatting and she put the cuff on my arm and we just talking and then I stopped and I was like, oh my God, snatched that thing off so quick. And then I was just shaking because I'm like, I do not want lymphedema in my arm with all the problems I got. That is one problem I don't need. I was so shook. 
I didn't even concentrate on what the doctor was telling me at that visit or anything. As soon as I got in my car, I was on the phone calling the surgeon's office and asking them what was going to happen and blah, 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 blah. But they kind of calmed me down and said that it would probably be fine. The next time I did it, I was at the um, eye doctor and they put one of those cuffs on my arm. But I remembered right away before she even started pumping or just started tightening up. I was like, man, I, I got to commit this to memory. Y'all cannot do nothing to my left arm ever. I got to remember this. That was like in the beginning of me not being able to have anything done on my left side. So I'm supposed to be getting a medical alert bracelet because then I was worried like what if I pass out or something and then emergency um, folks try to take my blood pressure and they take it on my left arm. I need an emergency alert bracelet. And then I don't think a lot of people know it's like I have a it's just like an ongoing thing. Once once that happens, it's forever, basically. It's, it's something that's going to be with you forever. And it's, it's really hard. I try not to dwell on it because if I did, I would be a sobbing mess all the time. And just probably I would just give up. Because even though I'm not experiencing anything right now, you never know what's going to happen in the future. And that's that not knowing, but that things are possible, that is nerve-wracking. So, I have confidence, though. But, you know, you always have that teeny tiny bit of doubt. But there is no breast cancer in my family. None. I'm the only one. And I found it myself. And that's a whole other long story, but I found it. So all of the hard part is over. The surgeries are over. This is really just... I don't know why he had me come back, really. <laughs> because, what is this, December? I had the surgery in September. I don't know, I guess he's checking to see that they are positioned properly or whatever. And at this point, I really don't care that much. I'm just glad it's over. I thought they would be more comfortable than they are. I thought they would be more comfortable than having the um, expanders. Because I had those in for from January to September when I had the surgery, those things were so uncomfortable. Um, what it is, it's like, it looks like a, you know, in the cartoons when the characters have a headache and they would have those ice packs that, they, that you put on your head or whatever. It looked like that. Um, and then they put that in and it has like a little opening. And then this was like right after you get the mastectomy, mastectomy, um, they put those in but you're still kind of flat you don't just get implants right away because you don't have the tissue or the skin has to be stretched back out and all of that so what they do they put the expanders in and then I would go every week or every so often depending on what I wanted to do um, and they would inject if you're squeamish you probably don't want to listen to this <laughs> But they would inject um, those expanders with saline just a little bit at a time. So every week I would get a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more until I was as big as I wanted. And I could get them as up to a certain size. Um, but I didn't want to go as big as I was because I had always dreamed of getting a reduction anyway. So... And I think what a lot of people don't know also about the reconstruction, which I didn't know, it is not, it's not cute. <laughs> it's not pretty. It is rough looking. I 
mean, it's basically to me just so that you don't have to wear a prosthetic or anything like that. But as far as it looking, maybe it gets better over time. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like the way that they do it, and I understand that they're saving our lives um, when they do this. So I, I get that 100%. It's just that from my not knowing what it looks like after the reconstruction is not at all what I imagined. Not at all. But that was just my own not knowing. Um, yeah. So anyway, I washed my hair this morning and I just like combed it down. I'm surprised it stayed down as well as it has. It usually just pops right back, back up. But it looks weird to me. Um. It'll probably be, be back to normal tomorrow. And this is Friday. I'm so glad it's the weekend. And you would think that because I work at home that the weekend wouldn't really mean that much to me. I wouldn't be excited for weekends. That's not true. I am excited for weekends. I don't know. I think I just feel... I used to be anxious for my kids to go back to school when they were younger and they would always be into stuff and up to things. But now that they're older, I like it when they're home. I don't know. It seems like I'm more relaxed when they're home or out of school or whatever. It's like I don't have to worry about, oh, I got to go do this. I got to go do that. We just chill. They're at a great age right now. And I wonder how I'm going to be when I have an empty nest. I mean, I am an older mother. My son kind of pointed that out to me the other day. He's 12. But I'm older than all of the parents of his friends or the people that he knows, which is weird. But I don't really care. But, <laughs> yeah, so I had him when I was older than most people but like I said all of my kids are seven years apart except for the last two they're two years apart so and even my oldest daughter I didn't have her when I was young I mean I was young but I wasn't like a teenage mom or anything like that I was a full-fledged adult when I <laughs> when I had her so imagine that my grand, my mom's mom was an older parent too when my, my mom is the youngest and she was older when she had my mom so maybe it's like the runs in the family kind of thing Thing about this car is it has some really bad blind spots right on both sides where the um, side mirrors are the way that the that part of the car is constructed you cannot see and you have to be really careful oh <sighs> started out the morning with the heat on and now I got the AC on and I'm super duper early As usual it's just because I never know how the traffic is gonna be but believe it or not we just went through we left Orlando and went through another city and now we're in another city in a totally different county told you we'd be all over the place We're gonna do a little shopping too when I come out of here. We're gonna go to a different Dollar Tree. I have to hit all these stores when I come into the areas that they're located in because I don't make special trips just to go to places that are outside of my area. I think that's like um, 
everything that I do that's left over from when the gas prices went up really high, I would have to do everything in one trip. We have to map it out. We're going here, 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 and here, get this done one trip and go home. So yeah, I still kind of do that. No extra unnecessary trips. Plus, like I told y'all, I don't like driving. I really don't. I prefer to ride, but I have nobody to drive me around, so <laughs> I gotta drive. All right, I'm out. Let me go in here and see what the doctor says. All right, I'm all done with that. And my appointment was at 12. It's 12 11. So that didn't take long. And I wasn't as early as I thought. So it was an in and out deal. And I don't have to come back to see him <clears throat> until mid next year. I didn't know I had to keep getting checkups on the implants. But that's cool. I got six months to skip going to that doctor. To that doctor. Now we are going to the Dollar Tree. I used to go to this Dollar Tree all the time because ballet used to be in this little area. But they closed this location. So we go to a different location now. So I rarely get to this Dollar Tree. It's a newer Dollar Tree, but it went downhill fast. <laughs> it was really nice at first. It's still nicer than most, but it's a smaller one. Um, yeah. I can't wait until my nails get back to normal. Ugh just looks like I chew them like a puppy or something and I didn't realize my hair was looking so wonky in the back combed down like that I need to fix it but I'm not worried about it I'm not going anywhere that important That's what I always tell myself. Those people don't know me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and even if they did, then they know me, so it still wouldn't matter. Okay. Did y'all see Florida in the news today? I'm not even gonna talk about what we were in the news for, but just notice this. Florida is gonna be in the news every, at least once a week, in your news. Not our local news, but in your news. In your world news or US news. Watch what I tell you. I don't know why we can't stay out of this news. It's funny, but it's not funny. It's really not funny. I think we were in the news for two things um, this week. Yeah. It wasn't in Orlando, but still, it was in Florida. That's kind of embarrassing. people Ooh, it's crowded over here why are these people not at work what time is it oh it's lunch time they came to Dollar Tree on their lunch breaks so this Dollar Tree let me let you see uh, I don't know how to work the thing um they got holes all in the parking lot. Well, I can't show you the front of the building because of, I'm parking on the side of the building. So, I'm not able to do that. And I was trying to turn the camera around as I was pulling up, but I, could, I couldn't see the screen good enough to do it. So, let's go in here and see what they got going on. I'm gonna be doing this. I need a much better purse. I have like a backpack purse and it falls off my shoulders constantly but 
heading in to the store. Thank you. Oops. I forgot I never did show y'all what I bought from Dollar Tree. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. These are the weirdly look at see this look at the toe on this stocking. That's hardly a toe. These are the hats. Tablecloths. They got these stickers. Those. And then those. Mm. Got these alpha. Seen those before. Seen those before too. This is Teacher's Corner. Here's some more alpha. Different colors. Got green too. Might need some of this. Huh. Three pieces. Might get a couple of packs of that because I can use it to cut um, word tab headers for my planner. Let me dig through and see what colors I want. I got these stickers here too, but they're not that cute. And I don't have but one hand to show you, but same stuff, same type of thing. Okay, let's move on. You're still looking, if you're still looking for planners, that your Dollar Tree may still have these. This is what I use to do my Dollar Tree planner spread for my food diary. Okay, I'm back in the car, sweating. Yeah, it's getting hot, or either it's my medicine giving me the hot flashes. Um, I got a couple of things, just some, um, I got some of that glitter paper because it can be hard to find and it's definitely more than a dollar at places like Michael's unless you got a really good sale and a really good coupon. So, got a couple of packs of that and some other things that you will see in a feature haul. Nothing major, they didn't really have anything in there anyway. But yeah, if you're looking for those Dollar Tree planners, they've had them out since, um, I think back to school is when I first started seeing them. So they've been out. And that store, it didn't just have the ones that I showed you, it had a whole end cap full of them with the um, yearly wall cal calendars. There was plenty 
I'm finna get in this line. This is a good thing about having an itty bitty car. <sighs> I don't know if the air condition is um, messing up the audio or not, but it was really hot when I got back in the car because the car was sitting in the sun and I was already hot from being in the store. I do realize just even trying to show footage in Dollar Tree that it's difficult for me to do that when I'm actually buying something because I got my hands full, got my purse, which does not stay on my shoulder. I guess I need a crossbody or something, but I like, I have, it's not that I like to, I carry a lot of stuff in my purse, which I probably don't need to do that anymore. It started to be like that when my kids were younger. So I got this ginormous wallet in there. It's got the kids' um, health cards and my cards and just a whole bunch of stuff that I always feel like I need. I keep um, some checks just in case, even though I don't use them. Um, yeah, I got that giant wallet. Then I've got a little purse thing, a little zipper pouch that I keep my tech stuff in or things like dental floss. So I keep extra um, USB cord and the brick or the port, power port, whatever. We call it a brick at our house. Um, so I have that in there. I got probably I have three sets of headphones i got a lot of stuff i got my portable charger see i'm all into the tech i can't you can't get me trapped off somewhere without being able to charge my device so i got everything i got adapters in there um what else is in that main pocket and most of that stuff i don't hardly ever use so I probably could get away with a smaller purse, but then I feel like as soon as I go with a smaller purse and don't keep that stuff on me at all times, that's when I'm gonna need it. And so I don't downsize. And then I don't like, like when I'm getting ready to pay at the register and stuff, I have one of those um, aluminum wallets for my debit cards. So, when I'm at the register, I don't like to have to be digging in my wallet and through my purse. So I use my little aluminum wallet for the cards that I use all the time. And I like to have that easily accessible so they don't have to dig for it. And so I like to have specific pockets in my purse for that reason. And I'm just not sure that that would work with something smaller which is it's hard for me to find purses that I like because it's gotta be cute, but it also has to be, this is the one thing in my life that I really want to be functional. And I need, I like things in compartments and I've had one of those purse organizer things. They're okay, but even that gets jumbled up over time and I have to like clean it out I don't know. And then when I get a purse, I'm not a person that changes purses daily or with my outfit and all that. I don't do that. I used to do it when I was going to church. That's it. I would change my purse for church. But other than that, nah. I'll, I'll use it until I wear it out. And that's what's happening with this backpack thing. It's like a satiny backpack which is why it slips off my shoulder all the time because of the material that it's made out of. But the straps are starting to fray, like it's tearing up. So it's time to get another bag. And I saw one on um, Amazon. It was actually from an ad on Instagram and I went and looked at it. So I may get that for myself for my birthday. I'm just, I just keep buying myself stuff for my birthday. <laughs> But, yeah. Well. Anyway. So, I need a new purse. All of that to say, I need a new purse. And how I'm picky about my purse. And, actually, 
I was looking at my ginormous wallet. I need a new wallet. That thing is tore up from the floor up. So <laughs> I would probably be embarrassed to pull it out to actually use it in front of someone. But it has, I mean, like I said, it has all the stuff that I don't use on a regular basis, but I still would not feel comfortable leaving at home. So, for instance, it has my ID. I don't hardly ever have to show my ID for anything. So, so all this police activity. crazy around Christmas time, huh? Robbing jewelry stores, stealing uh, UPS trucks. And stuff like that. <laughs> Having um, brawls at high schools. And what is going on? getting ready to pass by Joanne and Michaels. And I'm not going to either one of them. Can you believe it? Can you dig it? But I'm going to a shopping center tomorrow where Hobby Lobby is. The one that I, the Hobby Lobby that I didn't go to the other day when I was at the doctor's office. Um, I'll be in the general area. Well, I'll be in the same shopping center. So I'll definitely be going there tomorrow that's when I go to the Old Navy to try to find some jeans for my son what I should do is just to save time is look online find some find the jeans and go ahead and pay for them and all I gotta do is pick them up at the store then we can spend our time in Hobby Lobby so my daughter is usually the one hanging around with me in the stores and stuff while we're waiting for ballet to be over it feels like hair on my face um, and she always looks like she's so bored <laughs> so I always ask her is this, is this boring to you am I annoying you am I getting on your nerves and I was like do you know why I'm doing this because a lot of times when I'm in the store I'm recording what I'm seeing and stuff like that or I'm just like browsing crafting and stationary stuff so she says no it's fine she's like I know what you're doing I understand that you, what you're doing so that's good she's glued to her phone anyway but still I just like to ask because I don't want somebody shopping with me that's bored <laughs> I don't know I think I'm an empath and worry about other people's feelings affect my mood If you got bad juju going on, it's like it bothers me. Um, I can kind of sense when people are not happy or something's wrong, even if they are not really saying anything. Mm. That's why I don't do crowds because it's like you get bad vibes. So I don't know. But my son had the nerve to tell me, you did a 40-minute vlog? I was like, yeah, why? Who does that? I was like, I know people that do an hour and a half vlog. <laughs> 40 minutes is not that long. I'm just like, I was just talking while I was in the car, doing what I got to do, going where I got to go. I mean... So, I'm going to try and do shorter vlogs for the rest of the month. Because my son getting on my case about doing a 40-minute vlog. This one is probably an hour unless I edit it down. A little twerp. Anyway. We are nearing home, kind of. Traffic is a little bit heavy, but that's because it's Friday and it's lunchtime. 
and everybody's out trying to get their grub. But I've been working on a schedule for myself for social media. I shared it on Instagram for social media and for my graphic design, not graphic design, um, my scrap craftastic work. So like creating inserts, creating graphics, stuff like that. There's so many different things that I do. I do the inserts, I do templates and cut files. I do um, custom graphics. Um, I want to do more dashboards and covers and stuff like that. So, and then I want to do designed inserts where it's not just a black and white insert. It actually has a design. I've done a few of those in the past, but I want to continue with that. So, I've set myself up a schedule where on certain days, during certain days of certain weeks, I will be doing certain things. So, hopefully I can make that work. I put dolls on there because that's something that I've really been struggling with. I have to really have the inspiration to draw a doll because of the way that I have to do it and the software that I use. It's not like I'm not like most of the people that are doing this are doing it on an iPad and they're it's easy because with Procreate on the iPad Pro, it kind of corrects your lines when you're drawing and stuff. I don't have that really in Illustrator and I draw my dolls in Illustrator so and then I like them to look less cartoony too um so it's, it's just a whole different process it takes longer and I'm actually doing the drawing I know a lot of the shops they hire freelancers or illustrators to do it but I'm actually doing my own drawings then I'm trying to do everything else that I have to do. And I guess I could hire somebody, but then the illustrations would not look like my illustrations. It would look like everybody else's. So, yeah. I remember when I first did a doll. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> I just say these people in the planet community are a trip. That's all. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm trying to work myself out of schedule. I need to be more productive. I need to get this stuff out and not just be thinking about it all the time. Actually make it happen. So probably I'm gonna have to work out the kinks. But like I said, I wanted to do more stickers again. It's not, I stopped a lot of stuff that I probably never should have stopped. I should have just kept going even though it didn't seem like anybody cared or was interested. I should have just kept going. So now I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep putting it out, putting it out, putting it out. And because I've noticed that things that I put out two or three years ago, people are just seeing it now and are wanting it and I'm like just because okay so the phone cut off on me because it got too hot and I had it plugged in and it was sitting up in the window in the sun so but what I was saying was just because something is old to me doesn't mean it's old to them or just because I'm tired of it doesn't mean everybody's gonna be tired of it so like I, I was just gonna keep putting new stuff out and promoting the old stuff because not everybody has seen it. So anyway, I am home now and I'm gonna end today's Vlogmas right here. I hope you're enjoying these. If you are, try to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. That would be really nice. Okay, so I can know if I should keep going or if I should stop. I don't even know if this is something I wanna do after December. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, talk to you guys later.